Homeward Bound. Engines come and go at the sheds all the time. There is always someone new in the yards. Some engines stay the night and become good company. Others are watered and cold and leave within the hour. Younger engines that live at the shed become quite fond of visitors and are always disappointed when they have to leave. The older engines are used to this and while they are kind and polite don't become too attached to the visitors as in the end they have to leave for home. Most of the engines that live in the shed have one way or another been transferred to the shed and made it their home. But one engine that stayed quiet and shy still hadn't made it his home. Ivor sat in the sheds upset and all alone. Ivor had been transferred from the Somerset and Dorset region. He loved it there. The countryside and challenging gradients made it a wonderful place to live until he was transferred to London to help with passenger services. He was happy he had good friends he could rely on, but missed the glowing atmosphere and warm welcomes he used to receive on his old line. Ivor kept this to himself, until Jimmy spotted him hiding amongst a line of wagons in the yards. "'What are you doing here?' asked Jimmy. "'Oh, remembering,' sighed Ivor. "'Remembering about what exactly?' asked Jimmy again. Ivor paused then told Jimmy everything. Ivor thought he would feel better for telling someone, but oddly he didn't feel relieved of his sadness. Perhaps you need a change of scenery, suggested Jimmy, hoping for a smile off the large tank engine. The only response Jimmy got was a quiet, perhaps. Ivor rolled out of the yards as Jimmy was left defeated and worried. Later on that day, Jimmy took some workmen a few miles down the line to fix a broken signal. Fred was waiting patiently as the men started work. Jimmy, still thinking about Ivert, seeked advice off the old freight engine. Fred, I'm worried about Ivert. He seems to be missing his original home, confided Jimmy. He's not himself. He hides in sidings or at the back of the shed and keeps quiet. He stays away from the other engines now and I'm worried it may affect his work soon. Fred pondered at the situation. Hmm... You should definitely speak to the shed master about this. He may be able to sort things out. In the meantime, we must do our best in keeping Ivert's spirits up. We cannot let it affect his work. Jimmy steamed back towards the sheds, but was diverted towards the yards. When he arrived, there was Ivert being checked over under the depot crane with the shed master and a few engineers. Ivert was still depressed and hadn't built up steam properly. He was rough with the coaches and always short of steam. It's not like him, said the driver. There must be something wrong. Well, I can't find anything wrong, quizzed the engineer. You just might have a stubborn engine. No, 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 it's, it's not Ivor at all. That's more like William, interrupted the shedmaster. Ivor took another deep, long sigh as everyone was left scratching their heads. Jimmy shunted Ivor back to the sheds with the shedmaster on board. When Ivor was asleep, Jimmy spoke to him at why Ivor was feeling so blue. So that's what's wrong, smiled the Shedmaster. I'm not promising anything, but I'll see what I can do. He turned and hurried away and left Jimmy smiling proudly. A few days later, the Shedmaster held Ivor back at the sheds. Ivor was beginning to cheer up. The engines had kept his spirits up and Ivor was starting to become his normal self again. But the Shedmaster had a surprise. Recently, Ivor, you've been suffering from homesickness. I understand that you missed the Somerset and Dorset, and you haven't been yourself for a while. Yes, sir, Ivor quivered. He was starting to get quite emotional. I, 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 I am grateful to everyone from my home here, but I just wish I could go back to my real home, even for just one day. Well, Ivor, you can, smiled the shed master. One of your brothers, number 41241, is going in for a general overhaul, and I have put your name forward to take his place for a couple of weeks. Ivor whistled loudly. He couldn't believe what he had heard. You mean I can go back home? he cried. Just for a while, until you come back. We still need you here, said the Shedmaster. Oh, 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 yes, sir, certainly, sir, of course, sir. Thank you, sir, Ivor stuttered with shock. That afternoon, Ivor proudly left for the Somerset and Dorset. He raced through the countryside and whistled at waving children. He was so excited the driver had to hold him back. Steady, boy. Steady, called the driver. He turned to the fireman. Well, there certainly isn't anything wrong with him now. Ivor smiled all the way until he was finally greeted by an S&D 7F loco. 
Ivor remembered him well, and the two were reunited once again, chatting about times gone by. Ivor really felt as if he had come home. Meanwhile, back at Euston, the shedmaster broke the news to the engines. All were pleased for Ivert, but William, as ever, butted in. So British Railways has allowed Ivert to go on holiday. The engines took no notice, and the shedmaster walked away chuckling to himself. I wonder who will be taking over his trains, puffed Jimmy. William suddenly spluttered in disbelief. <laughs> Hopefully not that! The engines looked in horror as rumbling towards them was a class 08 shunter. Hello, sneered the diesel. The engines quivered and gulped. This was one engine they never fought to see in their sheds. They all stared at the diesel in a fierce manner, and unusually, everyone in the yard fell silent.